Hi dear students, how are you? I hope you're fine. Today we're gonna complete the issues addressed by the macroeconomics. So we have here the prices, the causes of the prices to rise. Remember, we are gonna talk about the global economic system, the government policies, the long run uh, economic growth, the activity of uh, fluctuation, and also the problem of unemployment so let's start with the long run economic growth so as uh, as we know that the rich nations have experienced what extended periods of rapid here economic growth so we know that the rich nations the rich countries have have experienced what the periods of the rapid the quick economic growth while the poor nations here either have never experienced the uh, economic growth or it um, experiences some periods of the economic growth and then here was offset by the economic decline. So, we are going to talk about here the increased output also. The increased output, what does it mean the increased output? the total output the total output is increasing why because of the increasing population so while you're having here more and more of the workers so you're gonna have what you're gonna have increased in the total output so increasing average of the labor productivity means what means that the amount of the output produced per unit of worker input or labor input so wherever you have or uh, you have more and more of the population so you're having more and more of the percentage of the available workers so this is called what labor productivity or the average of labor productivity rates of growth of output so what are the rates of growth of output or output per one worker are determined by what what are the factors affecting here the rates of growth so the rates of savings and investment how many of how much here of your savings and investment uh, how much money how here the how how much the percentage of your savings and investment what are the rates of the technological change in your economy what are the rates of change in the other factors so all these here factors determining here the rates of growth of the output business cycles what does it mean business cycles are the short run contraction and expansions of economic activity so the most here volatile uh, period in the history for example uh, in the history of the canadian output was between 1914 and 1945 so this is an example of the here uh, history of the canadian output so what about what does it mean recessions recessions means the downward phase of the business cycle when national output is falling or growing but just slowly slowly hard times for many people a major political concern this is because of the hard times for many people or the major political concern remember here this was the decline of what decline of the here national output what about another thing we want to discuss is called unemployment unemployment here recessions are usually accompanied by the high unemployment if you are having recession and i want to um, this is a graph for example i have here before uh, economic growth good economic growth but then a decline in the here economic growth so this is the downward phase of the business cycle where the national output is falling or just growing in uh, a very slowly uh, very slowly way so this is because of the hard times or 
so the unemployment here as I told you is accompanied usually accompanied by the recessions of course why because the number of people who are available for work are actively seeking it but cannot find jobs this is the definition of the unemployment unemployment I can't find job while I'm seeking for this uh, kind of jobs but I can't find it uh, at the end so the unemployment rate equals what unemployed people over the labor force the number of workers multiplied by hundred percent this is how can I find the unemployment rate the unemployment rate here can stay high even when the economy is doing well after eight years of economic growth in 2000 the unemployment rate in Canada was near 7% so let's talk about the inflation when prices of most and I remember that one of my students asked me about the inflation last session so inflation comes now when prices of the most goods and services are rising over time it's inflation when they are falling it's deflation so when the prices of the the goods of most of goods and services are getting rising and rising and rising over time so you can't buy or you can't afford buying them this is called inflation while here falling the prices is called deflation the inflation rate is what the uh, definition here is the percentage of the increase in the average year level of prices what are and the question comes up on your minds now what are the effects of inflation when the inflation rate reaches an extremely high level the economy tends to what function poorly so here the economy i can't hear i can't buy things so I don't have here um, that demand will be very here decreased that demand will decrease so the purchasing power of money erodes quickly when forces people to spend their money as soon as they receive it this means that if your salary for example is ten thousand dollars or ten thousand pounds and and it happened here in Egypt what happened the prices of goods and services was um, uh, uh, the price of goods and services um, rise very very in a very high level so the and your salary is the same ten thousand pounds so what happens whenever you got your money or got your salary you spend your money as soon as you receive it so the international economy let's talk about now the international economy and economy which has extensive trading and financial here relationships with other national national uh, economies is an open economy so when the economy has here trading and financial relationships with other national economies or other countries this is called open economy an economy with no relationships is called here the opposite is closed economy so this is easy to understand it the international economy international trade and borrowing relationships import and export can transmit here business cycles from one country to another country so here as i told you exports and imports the canadian exports are goods and services produced in canada and consumed abroad canadian imports for example are goods and services produced abroad and consumed in canada as we here import them trade in imbalances trade imbalances here means what trade surplus and deficit affect output and un and employment so what does it mean here trade surplus so it's the excess so from its name is the excess exports exceed imports here so this is the exports exceeds the imports and this is very good thing what about the trade deficit here imports exceed exports so here of course the trade surplus is better than the trade deficit so the exchange rate 
the trade balance is affected by the exchange rate the amount the the amount here of canadian dollars that can be purchased with a unit of foreign currency this means that and the example here the main example is between the canadian uh, dollars and here what and here the foreign currency or we can say the exchange rate of the egyptian pound with what with the dollar okay so the macroeconomics policy here a nation's economic performance depends on what the performance here of the economic here of the nation's economic here uh, the nation's economic performance depends on what very important here question the natural and the human resources the natural resources that you got in your economy the capital stock the capital that you already have the technology very very important here and the economic choices made by citizens so the macroeconomics policies of the government very important here point the the here uh, policies of the government how the government can uh, can interfere to solve problems of the economy or help the economy so i have macroeconomics policies i have the fiscal policy and the monetary policy so the fiscal policy is the government spending and taxation at different governmental levels while the monetary here policy is the central bank's control of the short term interest rates and the money supply so and as you see as an example here in egypt what happened when the exchange rate when the exchange rate or of the dollars and the egyptian pound um here the dollar jumped out jumped up here uh, with uh, with with exchange or comparison with the egyptian pound so what happened here the monetary policy the central banks here what did he uh, what did it uh, uh, how did it deal with or how did it deal with the problem it here made something called here uh, the interest rates was was very the interest rate um was was very increased to 18 percent and the money here supply so uh this was very good thing that the government have done the economy is affected when there are large budget deficit here the economy what about the budget deficit the economy is here is affected when there are large budget deficit the excess of the government spending over tax collection so here we have to interfere so when the government spending will be here uh, it has here access or more than the taxes collection okay when i collect tax as a government i can have more and more money so the excess of the government spend and then i will take the money and spend for the uh, national uh, priorities so if you're having here deficit in the budget in your money as a country or ever as a government so i have to use here something to interfere so the large budget deficits of the 1980s and early 1990s are unusual borrowing from the public might divert funds from one productive uses federal budget deficits might be linked to the decline in productivity of course of growth what about the aggregation aggregation here means that when macroeconomists here ignore distinctions between individual product markets and focus on national totals the process of summing individual economic variables to obtain a economy wide totals is called here the aggregation so what macroeconomists do macroeconomic forecasting they are predicting the future by using the data given and the analysis of this of these data the macroeconomic analysis as i told you after the analysis the research they are doing research to understand what ha what's happening in the economy in the market and then dealing with the problems and developing the good things data development 
then I'm having here macroeconomic forecasting. Here forecasting means I'm I'm predicting what future the future prediction of the future economic 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 trends here has some success in the short run. In the long run, too many factors are highly uncertain because in the long run it's of course uncertain i can predict the long run in a very accurate way macroeconomic analysis here analysis means i'm analyzing analyzing and interpreting events as they happen that is both private sector and the public policy making what about here the research trying to understand I'm making a research here to understand the structure of the economy in general forms the basis of microeconomics analysis and forecasting. So I'm having here also the economic theory. The economic theory is a set of ideas about the economy to be organized in a logical framework. Economic model, a simplified description of some aspects of the economy. So we will stop until this, my dear students. So uh, next time we're going to talk about the theories of the economy. Uh, I hope you understood everything. If you have any question, please send me on the SCL. Thank you, my dear students, for listening. Bye-bye.